Hello everyone and welcome to Wednesday of the lesson study. Um, so we're very glad that you are joining us. Um, I'm Jodie Lee. And I'm Brandon. Um, and we're going to say a quick prayer and then get started. Close your eyes and we take off our glasses, but it's just Brandon's weird quirk. Um, hey, some people take off hats, why not glasses too? But you don't have to. <laughs> Close your eyes. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you so much that we can take some more time to learn a bit more about you and the exciting messages you have for us in your word. Please be with us now and help us to be open to what you have to tell us. Amen. Amen. When you think about it, you need your glasses to see. You shouldn't be looking when you're praying when you need your glasses. <laughs> and now let's get into the lesson. <laughs> All right. Turn with us there to Revelations 14, verse 6. Let's see what it has to say. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. Saying, oh, you're just reading verse 6. I actually got a notification. Sorry, I was just checking a notification. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Saying with a loud voice. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm sorry. I got lost there. <laughs> sorry. Um, I thought my mom had messaged me. Mama's boy. <laughs> no, man. So turn with us. Let's see what the Bible has to say. Then I saw another angel flying in midair, and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. Once again, Jody Lee, we're seeing that the gospel is not for a selective group of people, it's not for a certain age group, it's not, it's not a trend, it's not a fad. This is a gospel for everyone, every nation, every language, everyone. It's for you. Why did I point to me? It's for me, <laughs> it's for you, it's for you too. That's really exciting. And I think, yeah, that's super relevant in mm. our like modern world where yeah, there's just discrimination and all sorts of issues. Correct. So if God doesn't discriminate. That's super cool. Even if humans sometimes do and mess it up. Yeah, humans can be silly, but God is wonderful. Mm -hmm. Let's continue to verse 7. He said in a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Now that's wonderful. I mean... If ever there was a good reason to worship someone, surely it's that. Uh, <laughs> made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. I mean, people are worshiping celebrities. What did they do? Put out a song? A good <laughs> album? Really? Is, is that person really worthy of your worship? This is a being that created everything that is created. The love that you feel, the happiness, and the joy that springs through your heart. And when you're having a bad day, he's the one that's there that holds you and keeps you up. He's worthy of your worship. That's so cool. And um, it's a bit off topic, I think, but I was once contemplating the Ten Commandments and mm. I was like, um, if like we believe we saved by grace, right? Correct. So then it's a topic for another day, but high level, like what are the what's the point of the Ten Commandments? So let's just pretend mm. like like let's just look at them and say, is there any benefit in us keeping them, right? And what I thought was really cool is if you look at the first commandments, where it's like um, the first and the second, like there's no God besides that God and uh, besides our God, sorry, <laughs> and you should have no idols. And you think, is God vain? Like, is he just like, oh, I want all the worship, I want all mm -hmm. the praise. And if you read this verse at a high level, you could be like, well, why should he have all the worship? But then if you dig down and you think about what is it um, who is it that you worship, right? Like, what happens when you worship something? You spend all your time and money, like, giving it to that thing. True. If it's like a celebrity, like you said, you're going to give mm. them all your time, you're going to give them all your money, you're going to, well, not all your money, but like a whole bunch of your money. You're, you're going to buy concert tickets. Exactly. You might even fly over to the country to see them if they're not coming to your country. Exactly. And you're going to, like, um, if they start wearing a funny hat, like maybe you'll start wearing a funny hat, you know? Yeah. So you, you kind of give them all this attention. And as Brandon was saying, like, are they even deserving of it? Most of the time they're not. They don't really care about you at all. They don't even know your name. Whereas our God, the God of the universe, he's the only one that's truly worthy of your time, your effort, your energy, because he's the one that cares about you so much. How much? That he came to die for you, right? Mm. Um, and that just puts it in perspective. He's not this God who's like, oh, give me all this worship. I'm so cool. Correct. He's this God who's like, 
Like I care about you so much that I don't want you wasting your time and energy on anyone that cares about you less than I do. And no one cares about us as much as God does. So Amen. that to me makes it, yeah. He made us cool. and he redeemed us. Exactly, which is beautiful. Um, so I think, yeah. That's wonderful. And I think um, the, the, more, the more you think about it, the deeper you get. It's, it's really is just such a wonderful story. Um, I th- in the verse as well, it talks about fearing God. It says, fear God and give him glory. And why why would you want to give glory to someone you fear mm. until you, you dig deeper and you actually start to uh, look at the texts in the Bible that talk about fear. And I encourage you to pull up all the different texts on fear. Do, do a search on it on Google. Go to your Bible with a fine tooth comb and search for every time you can find fear in the Bible. You'll see the fear that they're talking about is not a fear of being afraid and shivering and, and like running from God. That's not the fear that he wants from us. Look at John 3, verse 16. Does that sound like a God that wants you to be afraid of him? He loves you. He sent his son to die for you. Mm. The fear they're talking about is reverence and respect. Fear God. Give him reverence. Give him respect. And give him the glory because he deserves it. I don't know if there's anything you want to share. No, I think for me it's just like being in awe. In awe of this God who created everything. That's what the verse said. He created the heavens and the earth. He's worthy of it. That's a bit off topic, I think. But I was once... Con- where did Jody Lee go? Where did you go? Oh, I like standing there. Out of the frame? It's about Jesus, not me. Touche. <laughs> and with that, let's close. Dear Jesus, thank you so much um, that we have this opportunity to learn more about you. Please will you um, be with us in this week. Amen. Amen.